Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from Cam. Cam says, is there a point in competence or performance at which point it is worth skipping remaining answer choices as soon as you find the answer you are confident is right? I'm perfect to minus two on logical reasoning. I'm perfect to minus three on reading comp with consistent 100% accuracy on questions attempted. My timing on games is a bit more varied. I do the demon method of accuracy first, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, but I still not infrequently have to guess or bubble in D on the last couple of LR and RC questions. Any thoughts so far? Great position. Yeah, high five. Cam like, is, yeah. Totally killing it. Fantastic. I don't really care whether you ever finish LR and RC. You're already getting 23 or 25 points per section. That's awesome already. Uh, combine that with perfect games. You're already in the 170s. Maybe get yeah. a little lucky sometimes and get higher than those scores on LR and RC. Get yeah. better at games so that you're more consistent because you said your timing is a bit more varied. I mean, that always will be the case. Like some sections I'm going to do in 20 minutes. Other sections I'm going to do in 33 minutes. Nothing you can do about that. Like sometimes you see the shortcuts right away. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes you have to brute force it a little bit. Other times there's no brute force at all. So I, I don't know. The timing's never going to be consistent. Yeah. I'm so happy that Cam is at 100% accuracy on questions attempted. Best possible thing an LSAT teacher can hear. Like I'm getting the ones I attempt right. You've learned to solve the test. You're doing everything right. It's fantastic. Cam says, I could probably shave off some time from earlier questions if I moved on as sure I was sure I had the right answer. But obviously, sometimes you see an answer that seems right, and then reading a later choice, you realize your first instinct was wrong. What's the demon team's advice on when, if ever, to confidently move on as soon as you think you've found the right answer? Reading two to four extra answers to make sure they're wrong Seems like it costs me time that could be the difference between a perfect section and a minus two section. That's from Cam. I think there's a middle ground here. It almost sounds like Cam is skip the answer choices that are remaining or read them maybe like, more carefully than you need to. Right. Like there's a lot of answer choices where I will read the first word. Yep. And it says if. And I'm like, we're not talking about yep. a conclusion that was conditional. So I'm done. And people are like, wait, wait, what? What? Wait, what, wait huh? Wait, explain that a little bit more. And it's like, I already had an answer that I liked, maybe even knew was correct yep. in air quotes. So at that point, Cam, you can be super critical, but at the same time, you can continue reading them just in case something, yeah, you're like, oh, wait, hmm, I yeah. can't wipe this one out until you're done reading it. Short answer, you always got to skim all five, but we should be expecting answers to be wrong when we read them for the first time. So I frequently eliminate all five answers on my first read through because I'm like doing what Ben described, which is the first half of the answer seems like I don't see how that could be possible. Like, where are they going with that? How could that do what needs doing here? Probably not the answer. Next. And if I go through the answers like that and I find one that I really love and the other four, I'm like, I don't see where they were going. I don't have to mm -hmm. conclusively understand those. I pick the answer and I move on. Yeah. But whether that answer was A or B or C or D or E, it's really irrelevant. I'm always going to skim all five answers because as Cam notes, sometimes you thought, oh, B looks great. This has got to be the answer. <laughs> but then you skim C, D, E, and you get down to one of those answers and you go, oh shit, this looks exactly like the answer I was about to pick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you compare the two and you realize, oh shit, the one I was about to pick has this problem. The correct answer doesn't have that problem. That's actually the answer. This was a trap I almost fell into. And Cam, you're gonna start falling into those traps sometimes. The thought exercise that you need to think about is like, how much time are you really saving? Because I think you're really saving like no more than five seconds per answer choice. No more than that. If you're doing it right. But if you do the math on it, it's not going to work out because like every time you do that, you have some small percentage chance that you're going to miss the question. 
and saving five seconds by not reading some presumably wrong answers, five seconds to not just scan them and make sure that they don't seem like they're perfect. It, you have to, you have to be right about that. Like you have to be so sure about B that you're only going to make that mistake one out of 10 times or something. Even yeah. if it is only one out of 10 times, it's like, well, in for, you know, 10 times I saved myself 15 seconds. So I saved myself a total of 150 seconds. And maybe that's enough time to answer one more question, but that's where it yeah. becomes a break even. <laughs> like it's still not a positive. And that's on some assumptions that, you know, I, I, for one, I don't even think it takes a total of 15 seconds to rule out three answer choices. I think it takes more like five seconds to rule out those three answer choices, you know, not not conclusively prove that they're wrong. It's not like you have to come up with a full explanation for exactly why it's wrong. You just check it to make sure that it's not like, wow. Perfect. I don't know. Am I getting yeah. through? Do we think? Yeah, Cam? I think so. Yeah. You know, on games like games, there's sometimes uh, there are times where it's like, which one of the following can't go third? And I'm like look at my worlds and I'm I like, I know that X can't go third and X is one of the answer choices. Yeah. But even then it's like, how hard is it to make sure? Well, P Q Y and Z. I don't see any reason why they can't go third. Yeah. Like that took five seconds to just consider the other answers. And I, so I just don't think I on logical reasoning and reading comprehension. Absolutely. You're saving time by not, engaging with wrong answers but my method generally is not to engage with wrong answers and the way i do that is by expecting all five answers to be wrong the first time i read them through if i'm cam and i love a or b or c you know i'm gonna now be 99 percent sure that that's the answer yeah okay so i still read d and e to just check you know i'm expecting them to be bullshit i don't give them very much attention until they convince me otherwise mm -hmm. And I'm just going to check those off and move on. Yeah. Enough for Cam? Yeah, enough. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.